What's good, y'all? It's your boy Tall Yoda. Today we're gonna look at sometimes rappers check other rappers. We're gonna look at how that goes and how it went for him. Let's go. GG's got you. Fine. Fine. Goose. Come to the corner, then. Who's that? These are times rappers check their ops. And first, we got to start with Dougie B and K Flock because they saw one of their ops at a concert and checked them. Hey. K Flock and Ron Suno have been beefing for the past few months after K Flock claimed to be the king of Bronx drill. So Suno clapped back, claiming that he was the one who started the wave and that K Flock was I'm just the copying king. His I'm style. the king. That's how it all starts. Oh, shit. Talk about drill this, drill that. I don't gotta do no drills like that. That's what do that for me. Respectfully. Remember, I just say they you started this shit. Slow the f down. Slow the f down. down. Slow the and Ron Suno felt disrespected when K Flock called himself the king of Bronx drill, since Suno has been rapping longer than K Flock. I don't hate on no man. Anybody that's doing their thing, respectfully, come on. I never on. said, I never said is not doing their thing, but pay homage. If you got a formula from something, you gotta say where you got it from. Come on, boy. Get box braids. I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna square up like me. Tell me, yo, boy. What's my mother the next? I see it's getting knocked out. What am I moving? Then not long after the dissing <laughs> on social media, K Flock and Dougie B ended up bumping into Ron Suno oh. at Rolling Loud in New York, and it was on site. Supposedly, Suno went up to them to try and talk it out. But after the disrespectful things he said online, K Flock and Dougie B weren't feeling it, and things got crazy. After the scuffle, Dougie B went on Instagram Live to give his side of the story. You all like, yo, what's up, though? Yo, you good, though? Yeah, yeah, we here. What the f you talking about? Yeah, putting out your hands, trying to dab is all that. Ron Suno responded by posting a video claiming that K Flock and Dougie B didn't do anything. We all balling. We all balling. We all balling. We all balling. Why you backing up? Why you backing up? They talk about. Yo, Dougie said. Yo, Dougie said. Yo, Dougie said. Yo, they got security. Yo, they got security fighting. Bro, they got security. They got close. Yo, they got big. And thankfully, no one was harmed in this situation. But now, let's move on to Offset because he had to check a rapper for disrespecting oh, his wife. Because oh. back in 2018, Chicago rapper King Yella dropped a song named Cardi B Truth over the beat from Offset's Ric Flair Drip. I remember this. I remember this little beat right here. I don't know what happened. And rap though. driving in the foreigns. And you know I love Mercedes. Thick <laughs> Cardi B. Want to have my baby. He continued by saying, Weak bars. Don't play that, Offset boy. You better watch your watch your boy she on my yella also put up an old picture of him and cardi b together Super old. offset obviously wasn't cool with the situation and a video came out of him threatening to put his hands on king yella on facetime yo inbox them all it's called my i'm a pose i don't get no about none of that you said what you said what you said what you said who well i'm not worried about no that's when Cardi hopped in and posted a phone call with Yella where she told him So keep my name out your dirty mouth you dirty Like doing the most for cloud get your bread up The situation cooled off after that Dang. and in 2022 King Yella did an interview with 16 shot him visuals and addressed the whole thing I had uh, seen like you had a relationship with Cardi B and shit like that how that come about? <laughs> I'm in Cardi in like 2013 in the term, I ain't know who she was. She knew who I was. You feel me? I ain't know who she was, though. When 16 shot him, asked him straight up if he had a history with her. Yella finally squashed the rumors since he got pressed by Offset. Did you smash Cardi B? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I ain't had with Cardi B, man. You know, I ain't know. It wasn't me. Did all that clout chasing and everything, trying to make it seem like something just to say that on camera later, after the fact and after the phone call with Offset? Come on, bro. Just tagged Offset and said we been having so I never said anything, you know. And the video gets even crazier because Lil Baby ends up pressing a rapper about not having his money. But first, let's talk about Detroit rapper Skilla Baby. Because one day, Skilla was at the recording studio and spotted GMO Stax, one of his known ops. And once Skilla spotted Stax, he started trying to press him. And that's when things started getting more serious. So the studio owner made them go outside so they wouldn't mess up anything in the studio. And no one knows what happened outside, but GMO and his crew ended up snatching Skilla's chains and doing a lot more. Skilla was also outnumbered Dang. in the situation because a few days later, Stax went live on Instagram flexing with Skilla's chain. Hey, 
That's a nice chain though. I can't lie. He say he say you all some He say you all some Look at these little and Skiller ended up addressing the situation in an interview with Say Cheese. And he said, Looked like it was three or four guys approaching you in the studio. It looked like you were by yourself. I approached them. They know what happened. I know what happened. Everybody can say what they want about it. I approached them. I don't be thinking about, I know everybody think about jury and shit like that. I don't think about that shit when I get mad. That's materialistic. They got off. It is what it is. Now let's move on to when Lil TJ got pressed by a Toronto rapper named Top 5 for not checking in with him before he came to his city. Top 5 posted a video of him trying to press TJ on the street. Top 5 from Canada, I think. God, fuck! What? What? Them GGs got you, fuck! Oh fuck. yeah, that, that's a Canadian accent right there. Them DG, yeah, that's a Canadian accent Who? right there. Come to the corner then. Stop doing it for the camera, yeah. come to the corner. Come to the corner. Come. Lil TJ obviously wasn't too worried about the situation and started dancing for the camera. TJ also started posting videos of him going all over Toronto without any issue. I'm in Toronto calling like this my city, man. I'm being in the mall for like another two hours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. And then he exposed Top 5 on social media. He posted screenshots of Top 5 sliding into someone's DMs, begging to open up for TJ at his show in Toronto. Wow. He even offered to send a couple of racks just to get put on, but TJ turned him down. And that's when the issue started. Luckily, nothing serious happened, but people didn't realize how deadly it could have been. Top 5 is facing a murder charge right now, and there's no telling what would have gone down if TJ had followed him around the corner. Lil Uzi Vert also had to press one of his ops in 2017 because Uzi was having major issues with his label. So he made a tweet about the problems. A couple hours later, Rich the Kid hopped on Twitter and told Uzi, that's why you should assign Rich Forever. And Uzi took that as disrespect. So he quoted his tweet saying, boy, I'm not signing for 20 racks. Then a few days later, Rich went on the cruise show and turns things up. The host asked him if he'd sign Uzi and Rich told him, not right now, due to personal reasons. Uzi took that as disrespect and responded to Rich in the weirdest way possible since he posted a picture of him holding a huge crab and tagged Rich the Kid as the crab. Then Rich ended up making the beef official when he dropped the song Dead Friends. In the song, Rich says, teach you how to be a boss. You a middleman, you a little man, your money getting shorter. Rich also flexed how much money he was making and how Uzi was missing out by not signing with him. Uzi clapped back with the song Rich Forever and told Rich the Kid he wasn't the one to mess with. He also made fun of Rich's hairline with the bar these oh yeah they're dang got on the rich the kid hairline too though i mean i always kind of seen that but dang. hairlines receiving uzi would also Oof. go on to this rich on a few more songs so it was real smoke between the two and uzi and rich were both scheduled to perform at the roots picnic in philly uzi ended up spotting rich on the street and hopped out of his oh, car yeah. to press him huh. what we doing? That's a weird fighter stance right there. Your hand on your stuff. What we doing? Man, what are you doing, bro? I mean, you gonna square up or what? What kind of fighter stance was that? The video cuts off, but then another taken right after showed Uzi popping off at Rich inside a Starbucks. And not long after that, someone released a video of Rich running down the street trying to get away from Lil Uzi. Oh, I didn't see that part. Even though he got caught on camera running, Rich posted a video later and said, Man. Pulled up and did what? Did what? Walk around Philly like this. Walk around Philly like this. Pulled up and did what? A week after all that went down, Rich posted on his IG story, all fun and games till somebody get Then it's tragic. And after the Philly incident, the beef pretty much died. Subscribe quickly if you're enjoying the video. But let's move on to when Lil Baby had to press a rapper about his money because YK Osiris randomly right. became famous for owing other rappers money. And back in November, 2021, Osiris ran into Lil Baby at the jewelry store and Baby pressed Looks him like over the five spot. racks he owed him. I got him. He said he had on sissy clothes. Bro, roasted him, cooked him. Oh my god. I can't wait. I can't wait to get you. I can't. I can't. <laughs> you right now. He's so funny. He's so funny, man. 
At first, Osiris tried to laugh it off and said he couldn't wait to pay him back. But then Baby got more serious about it and asked him how long he owed him. It's unclear what he owed Baby for, but that's not the only rapper he had debts with. A month after the video with Baby came out, Drake made Osiris perform his track, Worth It, to clear off the 60 racks. Uh, he owed him. I'm not Baby, I'm not Boosie. You don't owe me no two racks, five racks. You owe me 60 bags. I'm playing the song right now. You ready? I need you. I need a full. Huh? You don't owe me no money right now. I swear, I need a full performance, though. I'm the real Wow. <laughs> <laughs> For 60 bands, 60 bands. That's the face of a man in debt for 60 bands right there. Ah, wow. Man, what? And it seems like all the money issues have left him without any friends in the rap game. Because back in October, he went live on IG and revealed that he doesn't rock with Drake, Lil Baby, or anyone else in the industry anymore. Y'all keep using that Drake, huh? Drake don't fuck with me either. Me and Drake don't talk. Me, me and the baby don't talk. Nobody in this is Osiris. Fans were worried about him because Osiris was breaking down into tears since he felt like everyone was fake to him. Mental break. Money, 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 money. Hopefully, Osiris can get back to a happier place in life and find some real friends in the industry. Lil Dirk also had to press someone back in 2014 because Dirk and Tyga had been beefing. And Tyga featured the game on his track to Dirk called Chirac to LA. And the game was talking disrespectful on the track because he said, Tyga hit me like Dirk dissing. Dirk no whiskey? Dirk who? Never heard of these. Then not long after the track dropped, a video came out showing Dirk pressing the game at a club in LA. Both of their crews were yelling at each other. Dirk and his people were really ready for the smoke. And a day after that went down, the game hopped on Twitter, letting everyone know the beef was squashed. And Dirk stamped the message. But later, the game went on an interview and made it seem like he tracked Dirk down and ignored him after he saw how small he was. We found him. We went to him and uh and I saw Dirk and he was a little guy, man. And he was he, he was cool, man. So it just Man, he didn't have that energy in the club. He didn't look like he was talking to a little guy at all. So it just went away, man. After the interview, Dirk hopped on Twitter and tweeted, he found me, LOL, with the, and glad I'm not a Twitter gangster. It looked like the beef was oh, going to please. spark up even more this time. But after that, neither one of them sent more shots at each other. Dirk also spoke about what happened in an interview with DJ Vlad, but he kept it short. Club scene was more like, that's our first time seeing each other, I had asked, it was tension. You know what I'm saying? He had t his people had attention, we had attention. So we just brought it to the middle of the club, called it a big scene. But at the end of the day, it was street politics. Gucci Mane also had to Man. check one of his artists since he was talking crazy and disrespecting him. Because in 2019, Gucci ended up signing Atlanta rapper Ola Runt since he liked his style and the way he sounded. Gucci even ended up hopping on a few songs with Ola since Gucci that. was trying to help Ola make it into the rap game. And one day, Ola and Gucci were on an IG live together and Gucci was letting Ola know he might finish another song they were working on later that night when he had time. But Ola started talking crazy and trying to press Gucci since Gucci said he might finish it that night. I might do that feel like you are tonight. And don't keep saying Mike, man. I need you to do that, man. I'm FaceTime me. Now nah, you be on that bull like you act like you can't listen. But now it's some music, but you ready to do the music. Don't say anything else you talking about. You tried me early, you told the folks what you told me. Nah, man, we don't really lie strong. with you. I really feel tried. Nah, we ain't gonna do all that on live, man. <laughs> I was gonna tell me, hey, bring the business, don't try to run my life. And Gucci later dropped Ola, since Ola didn't like to listen and was very disrespectful. And since getting dropped, his career hasn't had much of a buzz. But if you thought that was crazy, click this video yeah. to see Times um, Rappers. He did fall off too. He, he had that one hot one with a Gucci and that was about it. So there you have it right there. Respect go a long, long way. But that's it for that video. So thanks for tapping in. Make sure to comment. Uh, which uh, beef or which little moment you thought, you know what I'm saying, surprised you the most. Make sure to like, sub, and everything on the video and the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.